What is going on, you two people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here to talk PSA two days in a row. They had the news drop out of nowhere off the top rope uh, yesterday afternoon, a little bit before lunchtime. Kind of caught everybody off guard. Uh, and then later in the day, they gave us a little bit more details. And I had a ton of people. Thank you all for reaching out to me regarding their experiences with the queue. So we're going to kind of dive in, talk about some of this stuff. The, to me, the most interesting part was what they dropped information wise so we'll talk about that and then uh just kind of give you guys a little heads up on how this is going to work going forward so everyone's in the know so like comment subscribe all the youtube jazz down below smash the like button i think i gave you enough time to hit the like button if it didn't you still got time so let's start with the latter first and then we'll circle back uh how they're notifying people about this I saw a lot of people complaining in the comments about why didn't they send an email? How come they didn't send an email? Why was this only posted on social media? Uh, and essentially, it's probably because that's what people check more than their email these days. Uh, I get it. Someone even in my comments, I laughed. But uh, why didn't they send an email? Why was this only on social media? Something to this, uh, you know, in this regard. And then they put, I guess I'm just a boomer. Uh, and it was just funny. Every time I saw why didn't they just send an email, it's kind of what I thought. Like, okay, boomer. Uh, but it is what it is. So you need to be following them on all social platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I think Twitter would probably be fine or whatever one of your choice and turn notifications on. I have Twitter notifications turned on for very few Twitter accounts because I don't like to get binged and binged all day as I go throughout my life. But I do have them turned on for PSA because they like to drop random stuff like this in the middle of the day. Uh, and it allows me to see that as fast as humanly possible and get videos out to you as fast as I possibly can. Uh, Woj is another one I have Twitter notifications turned on for. So regardless, have those turned on for whatever social media platform you prefer. That way you don't miss out on this stuff because this is how it's going to be going forward with their timed releases like this. Uh, the regular service, $100 a card that is upcoming, that is going to be limited slots, is going to be announced like this. And they specifically say uh, they dropped a blog post to associate with this. I'll, I'll link to it in the description of this video that this is the way that they're going to notify you. And there is not these are not going to be scheduled regardless of what they're talking about, whether it's these special drops like this or regular service drops. It's going to be an hour or two notice. The bat signal is going to go up. Uh, and then you're going to need to react. You don't have to have your cards ready to go. They give you the slots and then you have 15 days to use them. You cannot get into another queue until you use your original allocation of slots. This time around, it sounds like it was five slots per person. And it sounds like a lot of people got in. Uh, in general, it seems like this worked okay for their first time out of the gate. And I really think what this that was the purpose of this entire thing was to allow them to kind of beta test uh, this rollout that they want to do, the queuing system and all that, and kind of see how it worked before they kind of launch it in the prime time uh, and use it more going forward. So giving an hour notice, they probably knew it would limit traffic a little bit. But the first batch that went up, there were definitely some problems. And then they pulled, I don't know, they pulled it down, but there was a little bit of a delay about an hour or two. And then I saw they put it back up again, and it seemed like people had really good success the second time it went up. So how many people I let in, I don't, or they or they don't say, I don't know. It seemed like a lot of people got in on the second wave and it seemed like everyone was getting five cards. Now, I don't know how many collector club members they have, and I don't think it worked for the lower end collector club members, just the regular tier and up. Um, but it sounds like it was five cards per slot. So you could kind of work the math out on that. They are promising a three month turnaround time. They say they don't want to hold this stuff for longer than three months. I'm assuming they know what they're doing since they're capping submissions and this isn't going to be someone, uh, you know, I had a few people say like, oh, here comes another backlog. I have to imagine the new team that's in place, because remember, this is all Nat Turner's boys, not the old school guys. I have to imagine they are smart enough to know exactly. They probably know down to you know, within a, a couple percentage points, how many cards they can churn on a given day of the week to, you know, so I have to imagine they know, okay, this is what we could take in. This is what we can get out to meet this turnaround time while still working on the backlog. And we'll get to the backlog in a minute. 
So three month turnaround time, and they're saying the same thing for regular service as well, 90 days. I'm guessing regular will run a little bit faster than this new economy. And it sounds like the economy, the $50 card, is only going to be for Collectors Club members. So you either have that or you don't. They said Collectors Club memberships will return for purchase in in a few months, but I don't see them putting that on the table anytime soon, uh, which once again, I think is nice. I am i don't have a Collectors Club membership. If I did, I would like this as a gesture at least to throw me something. Now, the interesting angle on this, and I don't really have perspective on this because I don't have cards sitting at PSA. Um, you know, I don't know how the people feel that have cards sitting at PSA in bulk submissions. And the fact that they're doing one regular submissions and now these limited drop economy submissions as an outsider that has no skin in this game in regards to I don't have any really I don't really have cards to grade at the hundred dollar level. I might have stuff at the fifty dollar level, some Marvel stuff. And I don't have cards sitting in the backlog from an outsider looking in. I get what they're doing. They're still throwing 80 percent of their workforce at the backlog. Does the extra 20 percent make that big of a difference? I don't know, uh, but from a business perspective, they want to get cards, fresh cards coming in the building, especially with new sets coming. You know, we're about to get Prism football pretty soon. Uh, we're going to get Optic football at some point in time. All the new basketball product is getting ready to come out right after Christmas. You know, NBA hoops, then Don Russ, and then, you know, it, they start pumping. They're going to want that stuff sliding into them instead of going to SGC or some of the other fly-by-night companies. You know, BGS is still extremely expensive, so that don't, they don't really make sense for a lot of the mid to lower tier market, but they want to start reclaiming market share on the mid and lower tier market. And at $50 a card, if you have that option to get in for only 20 more dollars more than SGC and a little bit longer turnaround time, that starts to make a lot more sense. Now, it just depends how many cards you have to send in for grading, you know, this, that, and the other thing, you know, as always run the math and do you even have access to this? Plus, can you get into the queue? It sounds like the queue system worked a lot like uh, NBA Top Shot, and they do explain it. Uh, if you go over to their blog post, they do kind of run down. I'm not going to go through this whole entire thing. Uh, a lot of it is repeat information, but there is some new stuff in there. Uh, the other big thing that they announced were some numbers, and this to me is one of the more interesting parts. They talk about that they are 40%. They have reduced the backlog by 40% over the last nine months. So you start doing some, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit down here and crunch numbers, but you just do some rough math on this. So the last nine months, they have reduced it by 40%. And that's basically been since they've been closed because they closed, I believe April 1st, it was that they shut down. So essentially the entire time they've been closed, they've reduced the backlog by 40%. So that means they have 60% to go. And so you would think it won't take another nine months to get through that number okay why do i think that because they've gotten faster as the years gone on uh the numbers prove that the gem rate data that we get um shows that they have gotten more efficient and faster and they are cranking out more cards every single day so far they graded 7.6 million items in 2021 now that's not just the backlog stuff that's everything um so that you, it still doesn't really give us a good idea how big the backlog is. The other thing that they note on here is 2.5 million where were value service levels. Now, you can assume a lot of the backlog was value. There are some other orders out there. Uh, there's economy level orders out there from group submitters. You know, it, it starts to get a little confusing when you get into the weeds. But two point, almost 2.5 million of them were value service levels. And so they have 60% remaining of the backlog. I'm going to say it takes them about six months to get through that. I am basing that on the fact that they're faster and the fact that everything that Nat has talked about has been, we want services back open by middle of 2022. So that timeline checks out for that as well. And I don't think they'll have the backlog completely cleared by the time they fully reopen again, but I bet you it'll be damn close. And maybe they'll fully, maybe they'll fully clear it. Who knows? Or maybe they don't need to because they'll start gradually entering in these extra service levels. I don't know. Um, 
So the interesting thing there, the big takeaway there is, is there is still a lot of cards sitting at PSA. 60% of the backlog is still sitting there. The backlog has been reduced by 40%, which means 60% of it's still sitting there. Now, how many cards that is, we don't necessarily know. Um, but I just found that number, those numbers extremely interesting. And the fact that they graded 7.6 million items. And once again, they have gotten faster as the years gone on. They are grading more and more. Uh, they're up to, I think, around 400,000 a month the last couple months. So as capacity expands, they're going to get faster and be grading more and more. And they don't have their second office open. They're opening a second office in Jersey to be able to grade cards from as well. Once again, I know a lot of people have been like, oh, they'll never offer cheap services again. Listen, they're going to offer cheap services when you're grading, let's just conservatively call it 10 million cards a year when they're fully operational, they need to fill 10 million slots. You don't spend all this money building out all this infrastructure, building extra offices, hiring all these people to then gatekeep people with a price. Yes, will Express and Super Express be pricey? Yes. But will we see you know a value level service that's under 20 bucks? I think we do. Will it be restricted by collector's club or set registry stuff? Maybe at first. We'll see. So interesting stuff. Hope this data was interesting. Also, you know, PSA, about PSA, public service announcement on if you are interested in subbing at these levels, make sure that you have notifications turned on and you are following them on social. So that's all I got for you guys and girls today. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Peace.